Gene Bauer, thank you so much for doing this interview. Absolutely, it's great to be here. You've been a vegan activist for many, many years. Um, what have been your most and least successful campaigns? I think that some of the laws that were passed, particularly Proposition 2 in California that outlaws confining animals in cages and crates where they can't even turn around, really created awareness and also the industry recognized that what they were doing was unacceptable. So I think that created a lot of changes in terms of reforms um, and awareness. Uh, but I think the most important thing that's happened over the past 30 years is that people are now starting to think more about the fact that we can live well without eating animals. And it's becoming more normal, more mainstream. You have significant investments now in plant-based companies that are seeking to replace animal products. So I think the business moves in recent years are probably one of the most important things. In terms of what's not been good is I think sometimes the animal movement, like many causes, can be a little bit insular and sort of implode and criticizing each other. And there's a lot of time wasted on internal distractions. So in terms of the things that have been harmful, a lot of wasted energy on criticizing each other instead of focusing on creating bigger changes that are much more important. Gary Yurofsky said the biggest threat to the movement is the vegan community, and that is kind of similar to what you just said. I would say, I try to frame it in terms of healthy behavior and unhealthy behavior. And I think in the vegan community, there's a lot of healthy behavior, and there's also some unhealthy behavior. Unhealthy behavior would be things like just criticizing others without really understanding. Uh, oftentimes it means that we have healthy, I think, is listening and trying to see things as they are. As a vegan activist early on, I had a much more, um, I think, black and white perspective. And I assumed that if people saw what was happening, they wouldn't want to support it. But people are more complicated than that. We're not uh, binary creatures. It's, we're not good and bad. We're both. It's a spectrum. It's a spectrum. And we are all on different parts of the spectrum. And if we can move people from supporting factory farms without thinking about it to recognizing that causing animals harm is not okay, and even if people are starting to eat fewer animal products and less cruelly treated animals, that's a step away from this one spot. So if we can move people down the path on the spectrum towards compassionate vegan living, that's what I think we want to do. And for some people, that's how it begins, is I only buy humane. And then we can say, well, what do you mean by humane? And begin that discussion. But in the interview you did with the Globe and Mail in 2011, I've heard you say if people can't go vegan, then they should eat more humane meat. Well, I don't think I said humane meat. I, I, and I'm this not is, calling you out. I'm just yeah. playing devil's advocate. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But do you think the humane meat rhetoric confuses people? I think some of the people that use the term humane meat more than anybody else are those that say they're against it. Uh, so, what interesting. I, yeah. If I you see think you about said. who uses the term humane meat, it's those that are criticizing people like me for trying to prevent suffering. So, a lot of it has to do with how you frame it. And, you know, I, of course, would like everybody to be vegan. But for people who are not going to be vegan, if they buy animal products from animals who are treated less badly, that's better than if they're treating the animals worse. So less cruelty is better than more cruelty. It's still not good. Uh, but sometimes those who are critical of welfare reforms will use this term humane meat and assume that people like I are pushing humane meat, which we are not doing. We are working to stop suffering. We're also trying to appeal to people where they are on their own journeys. And, you know, theoretically, one could say, you got to say, go vegan and, and nothing else. And some people will say that. Sometimes people have even said, you shouldn't call them animals. You should call them exploited sentient beings, which is technically correct. So I could go on a rampage about people talking about animals and say, you should call them exploited sentient beings. You know, so the words we use exist in a certain broader context. And we try to use words that will appeal to people and get them thinking and moving down the, the path. Um, and so sometimes things are l messaged in a way that might not be as black and white or as strident as some may like. 
but I think it's effective. And to me, it's more important to be effective than to be right. People are going down the right path, like you said, and veganism's uh, popularity has exploded. Um, it's breaking growth and sales records all over the world. Can you explain how public opinion is evolving on this issue? You've been vegan for many, many years. Oh, I've been vegan since 1985, and it's never been easier. And even just in the past couple years, it seems that things are exploding. There's more and more vegan food available. There are investments on the part of big-name capitalists in plant-based agriculture. And, you know, I've, I'm generally happy about that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think this is a very exciting time for our movement. What event has happened this year that has really given you hope, if you had to pick one? You know, it's recently Tyson, which is a major meat company, invested in Beyond Meat, which is a vegan plant-based meat company. That gives me hope, actually, because it shows that this business recognizes that things are changing and that plant-based meats are starting to become more popular and will become an economic force. So I think the fact that meat companies are investing in plant-based businesses is significant. Have you heard the news this year about Eric Smith, the um, executive director of Alphabet, Alphabet to Google's parent company? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He ranked vegan meat as the most important trend in tech, beating things like 3D printing, self-driving cars, and virtual reality. Mm -hmm. Kind of... Uh, it's kind of on the same topic as what you're talking about. Yes, I mean, the fact that Eric Schmidt, who really has a sense of the world, sees plant-based meat as a, a hot topic, I think is very positive. So, yeah, that's another significant development, I would say. And, you know, along with the actual real investments, you know, all of that matters. Do you know anything about Hellman's, who were actually trying to sue Hampton oh, yeah. Creek yeah, last yeah. year? And now sure. they've actually started to make vegan mayonnaise themselves. Yes, I sure do. Yeah, yeah. Last year, uh, Just Mayo, a vegan mayonnaise, was starting to spread across the United States. Hellman's, a, a large mayonnaise brand, was not happy about it. So they actually sued Just Mayo, saying they couldn't use the word mayo because they didn't have eggs in their mayonnaise. But Just Mayo held their ground, and then Hellman's dropped the lawsuit. Shortly after that, the Food and Drug Administration of the U.S. government went after Just Mayo and said, you can't use the word mayo because it doesn't have eggs in it. And then some emails were released showing that the egg industry and the U.S. government were in cahoots to try to go after this uh, vegan mayo company. And then after some bad press, that was settled and Just Mayo was allowed to continue saying mayo. Then after all of this, Hellman's, who started the whole process by suing them, started selling a vegan mayonnaise. So if Hellman's did that in the first place, a lot of this stuff wouldn't have had to happen. It would have been better for everybody. But it's a sign of things changing. You know, Hellman's tried to fight them, and they ultimately realized that this was a losing battle. And they decided that instead of fighting, that they were going to try to compete by producing plant-based mayo. So that's a good example of, I think, the things that are happening. Mm -hmm. A good example of how the companies are shifting on a corporate level. Yes. So as the consumers are moving over, the, the corporations, the service providers, the people that want the consumer's money, following yes yeah as consumers start voting with our dollars and purchasing foods that are aligned with our values and aligned with our interests and eating more plants and fewer or no animal products the companies who have been selling animal foods and all kinds of other things to us are going to adjust and we saw that with hellman's starting now to sell a vegan mayonnaise and i think others will follow suit Tyson, a huge meat company, recently invested in a vegan pl plant-based company called Beyond Meat. Um, and I think those trends will continue. Have you followed the Anita Crank story where she was arrested and charged for giving water to a pig? Yes. I've admired and followed the work of Toronto Pig Save for a while. And recently, uh, Anita, who works with Toronto Pig Save, was arrested for giving pigs water on their way to slaughter. And uh, it's amazing that law enforcement would decide to prosecute her for this. And I am hopeful that this case will draw attention to what she was trying to do and the kindness she was trying to show and how that was met with uh, by the legal authorities. Um, and the thing about Toronto Pig Save, which I like also, is how they would witness and they would do the best they could in a really bad situation. Um, these were pigs on their way to slaughter that they could not stop from going to slaughter. So they showed them some kindness and gave them some comfort and gave them water to quench their thirst. And it's very admirable. And uh, 
it's doing the best you can in a bad situation, which I think is largely what our movement does. Do the best you can while always trying to do better, but modeling kindness and, and then hopefully inspiring others to join and also uh, pick up the kindness uh, approach as opposed to mindless violence, which is what we're trying to combat here. What's your take on the uh, vegan billboard campaign? You might not have seen it, but it was New in York New York City, City Times Square, August yeah. 2016. Yeah. Largest ever vegan billboard campaign ever. Is this a sign that things are really starting to take off? I think the billboard campaign in New York City was very impactful in terms of the messaging and people seeing that these animals have feelings. They're not that different than we are or our cats and dogs. I think the difficulty, though, is to sustain that and to continue to create discussion and ultimately create behavior change. So I think it was a very good way to reach people with the message, but it needs to continue. And the difficulty is that advertising is very expensive. And you have the dairy industry that will spend $100 million on one advertising campaign, which is the budget of the biggest animal rights groups. So. So advertising is important, but if you can get earned media, it's oftentimes a, a way to get more bang for the buck. What's your take on Dr. Gregg's book, How Not to Die? It became a New York Times bestseller this year. I'm Top so, 10 bestseller. Amazing. I'm so happy that How Not to Die is out there and it's reaching so many people. It's an example of how people are hungry for information and they want to live in a way that is healthy and they don't want to eat food that makes them sick which means that they're interested in eating plants instead of animals. So I'm very excited about the success that How Not to Die has had. In Denmark, a red meat tax is being considered to fight climate change. This is great. It's great to hear that meat taxes are starting to be discussed. It makes a lot of sense. There are so many external costs associated with animal agriculture that are invisible to us. And, you know, ideally, the cost of meat would be a lot more, which would discourage people from eating so much. But short of that, I, a meat tax is a good idea, but I think we also need to stop the subsidies. If, how, do, how do you do that, though? It's really, really Politics, pack, politics, you know, right. the, pol so this is the... So when we talk about passing laws, we have focused on preventing suffering, and, and I think that's important, and it gets people thinking about farm animals as living, feeling creatures and raises awareness. But we also, I think, ultimately need to tackle systemic issues. Um, things like land uh, law, you know, like property taxes, access to resources like water and fossil fuels, um, and how the industry has preferential access to these scarce resources. And then we also support the production of cheap corn and soybeans, which is used for food for farm animals. And then when they produce too much cheese or whatever it is, our government buys it up and then feeds it to kids. So these are the kinds of things that should be stopped. And these are systemic problems that have existed for years. And uh, the difficulty is that agribusiness is so entrenched. And um, it's not going to be easy. But it, that is, I think, a very important place for us to focus when it comes to legislation, is, is changing the rules of the game and the systemic problems. Yeah, I think the, the corruption that perpetuates the injustice around the world is kind of hard to explain to a lot of people that aren't vegan, but I think the subsidies are a clear example of how corrupt the system is. Yeah, we have, a, we have the best government money can buy. And uh, those interests that invest in politicians often earn, get policies that support them, and the meat, dairy, and egg industries are huge investors in the government as is the pharmaceutical industry, as is the petroleum industry, and they're all tied together. And when consumers buy animal foods, we're supporting them as well. But as consumers start buying more plant foods and supporting farmers' markets and local plant-based community-oriented sort of community agriculture, I think we'll start seeing a big shift. And you know, when the dollars stop going to those big bad companies and start going to plant-based organic, sustainable type companies, then that group, the, the more green group, is going to have some more ability to influence politicians. The politicians follow the money. And, and right now, the vegan movement is, is, is not quite where the animal agriculture movement is financially. Thank you so, so much for the interview. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. I wouldn't be able to yeah. do this with most people. This yeah. is like 
yeah. all my spare time goes into looking at these stories and and that and if I was to talk to a lot of other people even like speakers and stuff about this stuff they wouldn't they wouldn't yeah. really know like you seem to really know what's going on yeah yeah and no, I you, you I live keep... it you live your passion <laughs> I've been doing this for 30 years yeah and it's very important to me and so I like to see what's happening I want to uh, stay up on the most recent activities and I'm always trying to learn from what I see and from what others are doing and when it makes sense I try to adjust my approach you know none of us has a crystal ball none of us can say for sure it's got to be this or that or the other we all have our own impressions and our own experiences and perceptions uh, and perspectives but it's important to listen to others because none of us knows everything and uh, even the most vegan vegan is not perfect. We all are works in progress. And um, no, I appreciate talking with you about this stuff. And I think our movement has come an awful long way. There's a lot of energy and enthusiasm. And I would just hope that increasingly we will focus a lot of the uh, intensity <laughs> external <laughs> as opposed to some of the internal unnecessary distractions that uh, I think have made us less effective. So I don't think vegans are the problem. I think it's just unhealthy behavior when we criticize others without really understanding. And we don't listen enough and don't act with respect. And, and that is not healthy.